<laughs> All right, so we will start the meeting. Now read the first section here. Uh, notice is hereby given that the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board of the City of Alpine, Texas will hold a meeting at 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday, February 9th at City Council Chambers. Uh, there is a Zoom for remote members um, for the purpose of considering the attached agenda. The notice was posted pursuant to the Texas Open Meetings Act 72 hours in advance and action items approved at this meeting will go to the City Council for consideration. So we'll call the meeting to order. And we were just alerted, there's three of us. We also have a member, uh, Ben Struthers by Zoom and three should be a quorum we've been alerted. So cool. now we'll head on down to number three, citizen comments. There's no comments or no citizens to comment. So <laughs> we'll mark through that one. And we'll go to number four. Is there a, for the approval of minutes of previous meeting, which will require a motion? I move that we approve the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll second. Perfect. Uh, any discussion on that? No. Then we'll take a vote. All in favor? Okay. All in favor and then all opposed? No one. So that pass. So we'll move straight into the information and discussion items. A, the first one is the update from Big Bend Parks and Recreation for Kids. Uh, Letty Carrillo is the president of that. We got in touch with her beforehand and she said there is currently nothing new. They're holding up and just kind of waiting to get some stuff in order. So we'll follow up next month and kind of see what's uh, where they're at. Next one B is update from Keep Alpine Beautiful with Adelina Beal. Okay. She was unable to attend as well, but got a little, a, got a little status update from her. And right. so, and we have a, um, so the update from that one is the downtown area, the one ways, um, I believe pretty much from Rongra Theater down towards Century. They came in and replaced, looks like nine different trees there that had passed away. Oh, good. And I think they had to cut two men contractors that came in, pulled the old trees out, replaced them. And mm -hmm. you can see it's two Chinese pistache, one live oak, two cedar elms, two chinkapin oaks and two red oaks. And one thing they said when they were doing it is they wanted to get uh, trees that would drop their leaves in the winter so that the, so that the sun would um, come through. So to, to get a little warmth on those businesses in the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, any discussion or comments on that? That was the only update from Keep Alpine Beautiful. Oh, that was nice. Glad they did that. Yeah. Perfect. Then we'll go to the next part, C. Update from Alpine Parks Department. Um, Robert was unable to attend today, but he did call in and he said, uh, Dr. Rangra donated 14 trees, which have been planted over at American Legion. And I walked through there today. They, uh, there were some dead trees there. They pulled the dead trees out, put the new trees in. Uh, not sure what type they are, but they're pretty decent sized trees over there. And they're all, they all have bubblers. So they all should be able to get water in that area. Uh, two more trees are gonna be coming to the dog park. Those were also donated from Dr. Rangra as well. Uh, second part, he said they've been fixing leaks. So I wanted to show the leaks for you guys here so we can kind of just know if there is a park where we're getting more leaks than others or anything. Uh, Coconut had two leaks, one today that forced them to turn off a main, they said. Mm -hmm. The other one was behind the swimming pool. I guess at the fil uh, filtration, they used to filtrate the pool with sand. Uh, so in that area, uh, they had a leak. And the last one was at Railroad Park. Uh, external piping possibly said some of this could just be due to cold weather oh, yeah. on that and the last part the dugout uh they were going to cement in the dugouts over at centennial park they haven't done that yet but hoping to do that before the season starts oh, cool. and just they've had a lot of people in and out due to sickness yes like everyone i'm sure uh any other comments on the city parks information or ben all right Hey, Darren, so you said those 14 trees were planted at American Legion, is that right? Yes, sir. In uh, areas where I think previous trees were. So they pulled out trees that had died and replaced them with these trees. Yeah, okay, good. Because there were still quite a few good trees over there when I went a few weeks back. So that's impressive to have even more. That's, that's true. And I was going to say, when I did a walkthrough on that, we'll talk about American Legion Park some more. But those trees are all planted in a square around it. Uh, and then there's one line because the two ballparks where there's some 
trees planted through the, the center of it as well, but most of them are around the outside. We'll talk a little bit about that on this idea for American Legion Park, which is actually D, right where we're at now. Yeah, Mike. So on uh, discuss ideas for American Legion Park, one thing I wanted to mention on that was Sarah Tandy, the Ward 3 Council person, had reached out and said, I think they have maybe one to $2,000 that she would donate, I think they use for traveling mm -hmm. with, and so she was, uh, sure, if you're on. Uh, yeah, I think it's a discretionary fund. Mm -hmm. 2000 so possibly there would be $2,000 there to use to kind of renovate that park. Okay. Um, so there's a little seed money for something. Um, and just pretty much, I was gonna ask about a couple of things before we really start discussing this one. I have a couple ideas. Uh, seems like most people talk about a walking path, but a walking path would be really, really expensive. Um, the other things I was gonna ask would be, on that park, everything's in a square and you'll have trees around the park and then also boulders around the park. And I think what I've been told is they that was all done intentionally because cars were driving in on there and probably driving That's on the baseball right. fields. And they do. They still do. Well, I mean. Because <laughs> they do. <laughs> from my viewpoint, I, I think it, I would like to see them possibly take the boulders and move them to where they're in a more organic, kind of like what Sol Ross has, where you take the boulders and you aggregate them, and then there's a tree there, and it's more of a landscape feature. Right. Oh, uh -huh. And they already have some pretty big boulders out there and stuff like that in the machine to move them. Um, it would just take someone with some landscaping knowledge to figure out how to make it pretty. Uh, that was one option. Um, that would be nice. And then possibly with the trees going in a, basically in a um, square, square, maybe if we mulched around certain trees, or somehow tie those trees together visually. So then instead of just having three trees in a line, you might take two trees and put mulch around them. And then those kind of become a pair and then, or somehow use mulching or curves to kind of break the eye up from just that being a mathematical you know, the mulching beds that go around them and call it, yeah, make it look nice. I mean, you could put like matching ones on each side of mm -hmm. on each corner. That's true. And with the rocks. Sure, exactly. That'd be great. Something like that. That'd be great. I get some sweat for that. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have free mulch from the recycling uh, center, I believe. That's true. I hope they've sharpened the blades, though. So just like also the task that I had sent in an email. I'm just letting y'all know. Uh, there's 12 city parks currently, and uh, those two maps show you where they are in the city, and I believe the city is looking into possibly removing some of those parks. That's why I wanted y'all to visually see where those are in the city. And to me, when they did the master parks plan, they were talking about spatial equity and everything else. So I would, I think it's great Pueblo Nuevo is getting part in that section of town. Amer American Legion has one in that section of the town, Coconut. So those are, I think, very important parks to keep in those areas. The ones that I was kind of thinking could be, if anything was on the chopping block would be like Arbolitos, which is right there at the train station area, which I think is like three trees or something. But I wanted y'all's opinion on that because it's going to affect American Legion to a degree. And that's all I, I asked have. two different people about that, about uh, closing some parks, if we had to close some parks. One was just a gas that we would close any parks at all. They said, no, they're needed. They're all needed by people, by communities. And, and another one was like, yes, I could understand consolidating and having like a large one on the south side, a large one on the, you know, like coconut over here, and then a coconut like park on the south side. And, uh, to me, I don't know, the little ones, like that one there on the corner at seventh. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. <laughs> Which one is that? I wonder. I don't know. It's a little park that they keep talking about viewing stars from, but. It's oh, just one bench. No palitos. Is it? Yeah. I mean, it's just where is that? What can I, it's it's like, like the other side of the jail. Oh, that one. Somewhere in that area. Well, it, only, it doesn't have anything, right? It's right there where no. Seventh Business. Yeah, if you around. just turn yeah. right there. Okay. Yeah. And um, I, I know it's probably historic, and you know, but just nothing. It's just a bench there. Well, I designated it as a park. There's nothing there yet. Right. True. You know, and. If it needs to be cleaned up, well, I don't want to be rude, but that could be a community effort to drop people in there to help clean up their community, you know, or or the Boy Scouts or something like that. There's no need to devote 
our staff, our staff, park staff to do that. Uh, I don't know of any other ones, but because I mean, my person, my favorite park is Juan Medina. It's just a beautiful little park. It's rarely crowded, has that creek with it, and they've upgraded it and they're going to put a new tree in it. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah. So, so that's a good one. And that I, one and Baines are always really busy. And I was going to say, I can't imagine closing that one, Baines, Centennial, yeah. because they have old growth trees. Yes. And those yes. are. Really, and Centennial is really busy too because of the basketball court that it has. And those are so all there's community a lot of kids parks. Yes, those are community you know, the whole parks. community uses them. Um, so, do so they, it would be hard to pick one. Do they consider Old Town Square a park? That is considered a park. Is it? Now that is city land from what I've heard, mm -hmm. but the lady that owns the shopping center takes care of most of that. Okay. She, she does, does a lot of work, great okay, job so with the it. City does it they much. decorate it, I think too, right? Uh, they do decorate it, yeah. Uh -huh. The city used to back in the day, I mean, they, they would maintain it. I know it was on the rotation, but I don't know anymore. But it looks good. It always looks good. Oh yeah. That one looks really good. It stands out. And it lot. needs to be, because it's right there in the it's center. It's right there, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that one's good. And that one, I'd hate to lose that land because it's in a nice central area if something ever happened with more urban park. The other one I was going to see y'all's opinion of is it's considered a park right in front of the jail there where there's a picnic table. Mm -hmm. um, that is also considered, it is, right, those park. two? Those are oh. Awesome. Yeah. Could, well, maybe that and, would be something to have the county adapt. Yeah. And okay, I, there's, the there's a thing with one of those parks. So I don't know if it's the one in the front of the jail or if it's the one on the side of it or behind it, kind of whatever at that curve, right? So, no, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. so I'm not sure if it's that one or this one that um, I want to say that if the city didn't want it, it has to go back to the owners. I think that's no Bolitos, maybe. Right. I right. think it's that one. Because I think so, that block that the Sheriff's Department and Police Department are on, that's Camp city land that was deeded, part of it was deeded to the city, to the county for the jail. Okay. So that's the way I understand it, but you might want to check with yeah, the mayor some, or somebody like that. There's something you know, with that. City manager. But I would see if maybe the county wouldn't be interested in taking ownership and then just having their trustees maybe Bingo. maintain it. That's a good point. Because I think that would be... I would trim grass to get out of there. You know what I Right, I know. Let me breathe. I'm so phobic. I would be like, I want to be trusty yeah, outside all day. Just give me some hand shoes. I'll go out there. The one in front. So okay. that would be the, yeah, why not? So those would be, and I'm sure this is going to be a conversation that we continue having over time. Nothing's getting shut down. I just wanted initial Correct. opinions on Correct. what y'all thought. Yeah. Hey, Darren, I guess my question would be, what's the downside of keeping, I mean, that Arbolitos is super tiny. Nopalitos, at least it's green space, and green space is hard to come by. So you give away park space, you're never going to get it back. Um, and I know we chatted before about Nopalitos, and it was kind of a dream that was part of the project, the leadership Big Ben, they were going to raise some money and, and not do much with that park, but kind of make it a contemplative, meditative type park, because um, there's not much parking, so it can't be anything grand, but, you know, put some other benches in there and maybe a little path or, or or whatnot. So I guess I would hesitate to give up anything unless we see a real big benefit. And and maybe it's a question for Robert and his crew, you know, how much time, how much effort is it? Because obviously that's something you get rid of if you if you do eliminate parks. But outside of that, I guess I, I don't know what the real downside is of keeping those and potentially developing them later on. All right. And I know that Chris had talked about, I think, doing a project there with the dark skies or having mm -hmm. telescopes and stuff like that right. also there. So I don't know. We did. I was talking about the one on 7th Street, but you know, you get three people in there and you're crowded. Uh, it's a small one. <laughs> that would be that Nopalitos was in discussion as well. If there was ever a creek path, the only pit, and this is a far off dream because right. creek path is a very big project, but the only area that the city Everything north of Nopalitos is a lot of land ownership into the creek area, I believe. And the things down is more manageable if you were ever going to have a creek path. So that would be an entranceway into that, as well as Medina. Right. If, if anything right. was going to happen, that could possibly be. And that's the thing that scares me about giving up land is we don't know what the future is. So it's kind of once you give something up, you lose it forever. That's right. That's right. Um, 
Because I wouldn't give it up. I just say, you know, since the space is, could the county help us with it oh, to no. maintain yeah. it and not really give up ownership of it? Just Especially you know, we're, just needing, we're just needing a little bit of help right, right now. Because right. Of let's whatever. all pull together and clean this up. So we might, <clears throat> when when they're asking on uh, parks and how many we have and everything else, we should check and see if there is a maintenance schedule on those parks where they mow maybe weekly at Coconut, but bi-weekly at some of the other parks or anything oh, else right. and we yeah. can see. Yeah. Okay, so we'll reach out and see what a maintenance schedule is on those to see how much work that is each park's causing them. That will help you determine it too. That's true. Because ultimately they are the, the public's parks sure. on things. That's a good way of seeing it. <laughs> Um, you know, and we can also ask like maybe the you know like she was saying the trustees but also maybe like the the boy scouts and the girl scouts yeah exactly because they would do the everyone's always looking cleanup. for community hours or any type of community service too. yeah well, they used to come in low tires for me out at the recycling center and that is a chore yes. <laughs> And that's why I just wanted to bring that up because in American Legion, that kind of helps us define the importance of those projects. Like, well, one thing back on American Legion is I see Pueblo and Huevo is going to be probably another two years plus project right. on that. So that's another long term one. So we need to, to think too in two years where we would be with American Legion. And do we want to just sit on that project for a while and then come in with another grant ultimately in the future where you do a big redesign? Because I'd hate to put in work and effort over two years, and then we come in and they bulldoze it and come up with some something right. bigger. Right. It's just an awkward space the way it's laid out. The layout is just so awkward. And, and you're, you've got something in the center, and then it's just like I don't know. It's sterile. <laughs> it, it really is. It's, it's, I know. It's and like, I look at Pueblo and I'm just ready for them to put something because there's so much. Please, dirt. at least outline so it. Dirt. You know, come on, put some stakes down or something. <laughs> right? Just go water it every day or something. So it just and matter. Robert was over there today. They were digging a hole. I was like, <laughs> What are they doing? <laughs> you know, it's like, are they putting a tree or taking a tree? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I, I need, need to, to put see as that. many trees as possible because the trees always help. Yes. Trees are really trees, trees give off oxygen. A lot of oxygen. And that's one of the only that in Centennial yeah. they have bubblers on. Um yeah, and true. everywhere they have a bubbler, then ultimately that's going to be a good park. And that one has already the the water there. Mm -hmm. And I in know Centennial we all donated like those. Those well insects donated. are part of life too. You know, you gotta have insects, you can have birds and mm -hmm. bats and yeah. All of it, all of it. The, uh, I'll come back on one other thing on that one too, um, but it, it ties in more to the dog park with there. Um, I guess, is there any other comments kind of on the just American Legion or any other ideas y'all have for the park? Because I think Ben, you had actually sent in the previous email some ideas that you had mentioned. Yeah, I printed that out because that was so long ago, I forgot what I said, so. <laughs> But yeah, we talked about the boulders already. And yeah, I wasn't sure what the concern with them was other than it's just very linear structure. So I, I agree with what you said, it's put them more aesthetically pleasing. And that's that's a benefit. I mean, geez, if you were gonna go buy a boulder, it'd probably cost you a thousand dollars these days. So you wanna, you wanna make the most with them. Um, and I guess one big question was obviously that's set up for t-ball and, and or softball practices. Do we know? And it's probably a question for Estella. Does that get used anymore? I, I think it, you get, it gets used more for t-ball than anything else just because of the distance. And um, they usually, Robert's really good. They go in there and they um, really run, um, what is that machine called? Scraper. The, the scraper, yes, oh. to to move remove a lot of rocks and stuff like that. So they'll do that at the beginning of the season, but it's mainly it's t ball because the children are smaller and the ball doesn't go as far. Yeah, so they're so just they use. Those are small for softball. I'm assuming. Softball, you need a little bit more distance, so we try to work with the school and use some of their fields okay. near Buck Stadium. Gotcha. and near the middle school so we do that and then the elementary also lends us like i think it's the back area that they lend us for the older kids and then the front area for the younger kids for the t-ball age gotcha. so but right now we have a i think there's a lot of room that you really wouldn't need american legion for the older girls for softball but maybe for the younger ones and 
Well, maybe the really older ones. You know, it's like, I'm going to hit so far. You know? All right. <laughs> <Good> joke. <laughs> but, but just changing the American Legion to give the community. And I know, um, like Randy Ng, he lives in that area, and they, they try to maintain that. I mean, they try to help as much as they can. So even okay. pulling them in, you know, and asking maybe their opinion of what, how, what they see us doing there. Oh, that'd be nice. You know, some local, yeah, some especially people especially there. with those boulders. What you know, if they wanted to go out and sit out there in the evening, or and maybe the the walk wouldn't have to be so so um, extravagant, you know, or whatever. We could just uh, make paths. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what it costs all Ross. They just did one, but honestly, it looks less like caliche and yeah, really that's, down that's pounded it pounded it dirt. I got property down south. Go get all the caliche. <laughs> right. <laughs> And I think it's just packing it. I think if you can just make a small path, right? You know, and then just packing that path. I mean, they could have a small on the, you know, just that small perimeter and have them walk around the park and then maybe have, like you said, the boulders on the outside where people can sit and rest and, you know, have it nicely landscaped. I think that would look really nice. Give it an appearance. It would, it would, it would change it. And, I, and, and maybe, maybe even designating, feeling. yeah, and designating a corner, just like we're going to do with Pueblo Nuevo to where you don't have things really in that center that are for the children. They're more to, you designate a corner of that park right. and just make it more inviting because it's not very inviting right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to go take another drive by there. Yeah. Now that the trees are in, on there. I know it's, and trees, yes. I mean, I'd love to see a lot of trees all around the perimeter of whenever they get started and it's a cost to have yeah. and we can donate those as as part of community members i know for for centennial um a lot of valentine's family donated those oh, cool. you know that are on the outside because when they did the dedication of the park in his name that was one of the things that those trees were donated by certain family members yeah. well if Pueblo Nuevo already has when i first got on the, uh, the parks board there were, I think, 18 trees that were already paid for. Aside from the ones that were going on there, so there should be plenty. Yeah, so that would be good. And they just planted a whole bunch, right? Because it looks like there's some on the exterior. I, well, I think that's what Hubbard was doing. I just kind of slowed down. <laughs> I know they've had well, they've had pipes there because we've called them in the past to say there's water running. So, but yes, and. Maybe for next meeting we can do a little layout of, uh, okay. of, those, of the park on American, American Legion. Legion, just to make it look Maybe, nice. Maybe, you know, someone can take a video of people using the park out there, mm -hmm. somebody lives nearby, just shoot a little video and, you know, so that we, the rest of the city knows that they're enjoying and things like that. And, because I don't, I don't think it even has like a picnic it. area <laughs> I was to say, where you would have just like a table and even a grill. Have, they used to have the... Uh, uh, horseshoes out there mm -hmm. and then they pulled those out because it's kind of a risk yeah. uh, thing <clears throat> and I was going to say with $2,000 you can't buy much with $2,000 mm -hmm. so I think whatever we end up doing with the park <clears throat> is if we either wait and do something grand with more grant money or something like that could be who knows how far in the future but if we if we want to be active and do something right now I think we need to focus on things like free mulch uh, yes. moving rocks yes. you know or things like that or one two, bench two with her $2,000 yeah, yeah. <laughs> one bench so you can go sit down and there, enjoy. are there no benches i haven't been by there i need to go i know so i'm gonna go and see because i know that the there's a couple are they there's, on the outside there's a yeah there's a big red one that they've rescued from somewhere yeah there's there's one kind of over by that little playground area i know for sure but yeah that was a takeaway i put down too was just there's no no benches even behind the t-ball screen and maybe it's just practice but yeah there's not much much for seeing, but right. So really? I know that Heather wanted to get like two of the picnic tables that we have, and I think two of the benches that are there to go to a park. Oh, that's good. So I, I can tell her okay. and we can discuss it uh, on a for sure. Okay. But she did say that. Ben, so we, did some of that equipment come from community center that we have out at American Legion? I think it, I'm not, I'm not certain, but it, it must have, because I was talking to some people and they said, they didn't remember having any play equipment. I said, yeah, there, there was over in a certain corner. So I don't know where it came from, but. 
There was either a community center or Sol Ross. Sol Ross, yeah. Stuff over there. Oh, okay. And one other option I was going to say too with that would be um, same thing with the dog park where if we build a shade structure and then we could utilize the labor from the school for, or whatnot for it, um, trees are going to take a long time to provide shade ultimately. So we could come in and put one of those angled shade structures in because I don't think that would be too expensive. And once again, downspout the water over to a tree right. so that it's getting right, water right. more. That'd be great. That's an option for things that would be less. One thing I was going to mention too, uh, in the it falls under the dog park or this was um, with Sarah Tandy's money, the 2000. Mm -hmm. the, my view of things may be different than uh, that is that um, we all, all the parks here are pretty much neighborhood parks, like, because you can walk to any park if you take a little time. Uh, so I wonder if she would be open to having that, if she wants the money to stay within Ward 3, or if she wants to focus it on, um, if she would allow that to go maybe towards a project at Coconut, which could be the dog park or anything else like that. I see. Other things. But then again, um, is it the dog park in Ward 1? It is Ward 1. Or is it Ward 5? It's I don't Coconut. know, Ward 1 is real tricky right over five. there. I think it's 5. It's 5. That's in Jerry Johnson's. It's 5. Oh, yeah. so it's Jerry Johnson's, okay. I was like, you know, we could talk to Judy Stokes and, okay. and see if she's got some of her discretionary funds. Yeah. But you know, they can all put it wherever they want. Yeah. I know, exactly. So um, well that would be Jerry Johnson then, and we'd have to get a constituent from Ward Five. It always sounds better if you live there, you know. So. And that was out of the graciousness of Miss Tandy to yeah, offer that. That was nice. Oh, so. That's nice. And she she has a soft spot for American Legion Park. So. That's good though. <laughs> yeah. That's good. And, yeah, speaking, I was yeah. going to say, speaking of benches, they do have on the interior those big kind of rustic wooden benches. There was I think four of those. I actually sat in them and they were kind of nice because one one side is shaded in the evening. So I thought that interior was kind of nice just to to sit and relax, read a book or whatnot. That, there, I thought there was a couple of easy wins. There's two big, huge planters in the middle, and they were just full of weeds. So, you know, you could just buy some cactus or native plants or whatnot, but that would be pretty easy win to, to get something nice in there. Ideally, something that doesn't need a whole lot of maintenance or whatnot. But yeah, some kind it, of native plants. Look better than weeds for sure. It's, middle. it's really awkward. <laughs> Big cir concrete circles. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they are big concrete circles. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea, though. I mean, something, you know. Yeah, See, it's I, like didn't you I didn't design that one for sure. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's just very different. We it's, seem to be putting murals everywhere. That bathroom is a wall that could be used for a mural or something. Absolutely. For oh, American nice. Legion stuff. I mean, they just had oh, the big style yeah. read one that they did over there. But Right. Somebody may want, like, kids may want to. And that was kind of the last point I had was for American Legion Park, it didn't really have much reference to armed services or it has the sign and that was about it. So it seems like, I don't know, flags or benches that were dedicated to each, each mm -hmm. branch of the services or something to that effect would makes sense at some point you might not be able to do much with your thousand bucks but but or I mean, murals I probably address that Ben, with uh, the american legion officers because they meet pretty regularly is just say you know we is there anything that you guys would be willing to donate um to this That'd park nice. for children and, i mean they do scholarships yeah. yes i know they do scholarships but just to give something to you know giving something back to the community aside from scholarships. <laughs> it, it's a mystery to me how that got named American Legion. I think it was a lady who passed away and then her family left it. Um, so I'm not sure how it got that to the name of American Legion. That's a, probably an interesting thing to find out. I guess any other kind of ideas for American Legion Park then or? Okay, perfect. We'll mention those to the city. We'll move on to E. Second to the last one, discuss ideas for Earth Day and the Alpine Visitor Center. So I just wanted to reach you guys real quick. Uh, Heather Yaden at Visit Alpine reached out and was kind of asking ideas. I think they're gonna try to work with Keep Alpine Beautiful for some ideas for Earth Day. <clears throat> so I'll just read this real quick. Uh, Heather Yaden had an Earth Day event at Visitor Center last year as part of the Midweek Mercantile. 
I don't think they're going to continue the midweek mercantile in the same format, but they want to host some stuff in the new space over there for Visit Alpine. Uh, waiting on metal for the pavilion, the new structure they're building out that way. So they're not sure if that would be done by Earth Day. But her and Chris Ruger were talking to kind of team up with Adelina Bill from Environmental Services, maybe something from the Parks Department to have um, educational vendors or games in a park. Visit Alpine can sponsor music, probably through HOT funds. It's a Friday, so something early in the evening would be really nice. Perhaps a food vendor, FFA could do brisket sandwiches. So it'd be a great opportunity for dark skies to let people do some viewing. Right. And Judy Stokes is working on a dark sky art project with a high school art teacher that could be turned into a coloring book, perhaps announce the winner there. Really, they're looking for brainstorming ideas as something for Earth Day, uh, possibly happening at the visitor center down there or maybe a park. And I was going to say that was uh, that is April 22nd on a Friday. On a Friday. And then a week after that is the Dark Skies Festival. So those yeah. are some things kind of out there um, just to ponder. And we just wanted to put this out in case any of you guys had ideas or anything to, I'm all about trying to get feedback if uh, we can get that back to Miss Yaden. And yeah, I'll go, you know, I can just go online and search up and see what other small towns have done for Earth Day yeah. and, and check it out and, and shoot you an email. Okay. Because we've cool. also had stuff at Coconut in the past for Earth Day, haven't we? That's a good question. That we've done. I'll look that so, up too. Yeah, mm -hmm. We can look at that. And then maybe involving some of the geology students from Soros or maybe the science students. Always. Out of the, Always out of science. the sciences. <laughs> all the sciences. Get them all involved. Soros, perfect. And then you had mentioned you were with Laura. Is that Laura Gold from Dark Skies? Okay, so you know her, and then yeah, you could reach I'm out to them. for mapping light. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, see if they would have any interest in something. I will do that. I will do that. Let me put them up here. Uh, ben, any idea uh, on your end? or Nothing pops to mind. Perfect. I think, well, you know, the, I don't know if Earth Day is the right spot, but is there a map? I know there's a map online of all our parks, but I just kind of even wonder if all the citizens know where all the parks are. So it, if we were ever going to have a handout of any sort, that would be something that might be helpful to, to all the citizens. It's also handing out paper on Earth Day that's disposable. So maybe that's not PC, but. <laughs> but we, we could do the app. Remember that we had that app that they did when we were talking about all the parks um, couple of years back but there was an application where you could see them on I think it was I can't remember if it was through Google but maybe going back and some of the documents that we have under the Alpine City website because it does list them in there in an area that yeah. talks about the parks so it does list all the parks but just having maybe an application that would give the locations like a like a scavenger hunt where you know where everything is located and we can also have a printout like of the map for them. Yeah, at least a and printout. And then the, a small picture of them, and we can do them at, this, at the visitor center. Yeah. Oh, for parks? Interesting. That's that's nice right there. Yeah, put a little flyer at the park so that for Heather to hand out with the other things, you know? We could ask Chris Ruge if they have anything like that, because uh, that would be perfect at visitor center on just outdoor recreational activities in the area. Yeah, and I know it's on his, I know it's on the website there. People just have to go okay. through The uh, map that I sent y'all with um, the locations in the city, that was off a of Gaia GPS, a hiking app thing. So I like was, that. That works pretty good. Yeah. And stuff. So maybe we can make some more. I've been pondering ideas for where, or mapping trails. You can map the Hancock uh, Hill Trail and all those things. All right, so any other any other ideas on Earth Day or I feel pretty good? I know the visitor center is coming along very nicely. So nice. as soon as they get metal, they're ready. <laughs> yeah. Dan, they, they were working on the restrooms today, which is good. There's gonna be five of them. And then there's a covered uh, patio, so it's, I'm ready for it to be done. And, and they did move the stone. You know, but Lucy mentioned know. if that lines up at all with Earth Day on having a uh, opening day or something for the pavilion or something closer to that time, but who knows? Right. It'll be nice. Yep. Be nice. 
Okay, then the last one we were going to discuss today <clears throat> is the updates on the coconut dog park, coconut dog park. Mm -hmm. um, Janine Bishop from the Alpine Humane Society reached out to me last week and said she wants to meet again on it. So they're excited to kind of move forward on the project some. It's kind of sat there a while since I missed the, uh, the December meeting and then we missed a quorum. So we uh, hadn't met in a while. Where we're at on that is, let's see here. So the city is going to require a resolution that we have to accept on that to accept uh, the improvements that we make to it. We'll get that over to Geo and Megan, give them some time to kind of check the resolution, make sure everything it's worded correctly. So I'm hoping next meeting we'll come in, we'll have the resolution at that time. Um, it would all be written up basically, whereas we, the Parks Board, want to help uh, fix the dog park, whereas blah, 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 we want to do all that. We'll put all the verbiage and words in there. And then we would accept that as a board at that time to present to council. And then Lucy probably knows this uh, better than any yes, of us. Once that's actually a resolution and it comes from the board, does it have to be, can it be accepted at one city council meeting or two? Two. So then that puts us another month out. So we would be sitting next month, our parks board will accept the resolution. And then over the next two city council meetings, they would accept the resolution. So that'd be two months. Two months. And what we're thinking at that time is, uh, Megan was saying it's best if we have all that in order before we go out and try to fundraise or anything else. Right. For it. We all get ducks in a row. True. So that might that might push that project. If we're in, our next meeting would be mid early March. April would be the accept or by mid April we would have it accepted through city council. Right. And then May we have those. I'm thinking about the labor from the kids in school. We only have them. A month and a half. So right. We, I was we, just thinking that too, because then, then then they go to summer, and mm -hmm. then it's what I don't know September, I guess, before they could start again. So they have competition towards the end. Oh, so they'll be busy. Mm -hmm. okay. So that might just by the nature of the speed of things, we might be fundraising. We could look to fundraise with the Alpine Humane Society possibly in the summer, and mm -hmm. then we're not rushed to try to raise funds because. The number when I talked to Mr. Yanez was coming in at around six grand, so it's not a small amount to build it. No. Um, so that gives us time and it could be a project for next school year. Right. That's true. That and how many true. council members can help us with their money? <laughs> no, we'll just have to shake them all down. No. Okay. And it's hard because some of them donate in the summer to the summer programs too. Sure. Yeah. And I, I mean, every project's a good project. So mm -hmm. I want to go out and reach out to the businesses and see if they could maybe even donate product or anything else like that. Mm -hmm. It's going to sound funny, but like in Ukraine right now, they've got these little boxes in every store so they can give money to their army. Huh. We could put boxes in stores so they could give uh -huh. money to the dog park, you know? Oh, <laughs> yes. So and, like and that. That'll... Good. The uh, radio station trying to figure out where to give money for the trade post. So every Bingo. month he donates to the trade. <laughs> the trading post money goes to someone every month. It's a right. donation. Yes. So, yes. Uh, so, so I just might get in touch with Martin and say that, you know, and ask him one month, just give it to the dog park down there, you know. Right. So that we can upgrade it. Uh, yeah. That might be, I mean, I, I think that'll be a good, maybe things moving a little slower is a good thing because then we can catch our breath and we have right. a summer to race it and we're not rushing. Right, and we don't yes. have to, you know, talk to Martin now or whatever, but yeah, in the future, these are things we could do. Okay, and that's what I wanted to give you all the heads up on it. So next meeting, we'll have the resolution ironed out. Okay. And, you know, we'll just give it a quick read, approve that, and then get it in city council's hands to move forward on. And let them do their work. Good. Yep. That sounds great. Um, and... The fundraising would go through a 501c, so Humane Society would be perfect for that. So nothing, you know, that we have to worry about on that end. Good. And that is everything I had on that. The, the one, I mean, the thing on that too is if Ms. Tandy or anyone else would be open, if there was money from the city for something like that, then possibly that could be seed money towards things. I don't know. We'd have to talk to the city right. on how that works. Right. I don't understand all that. Hmm. But we all know there's I've got anyway. some ideas. <laughs> so and at the and at this dog park, are there enough benches or whatever to sit on? We're thinking about so there would be a there will be a, the long angled roof about 42 feet wide because it, it goes in three feet increments, angled back and with your post, and then it would be a bench on each, each side. One? 
the big dog side and the little dog side. And you may even have at 42 feet, you're gonna have 20 feet on one side, 22 feet on the other side. And um, so you'll have plenty of space if you wanted to put a bench. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping to keep the resolution wide open enough that the project would be initially to put the shade structure in and then maybe afterwards build the um, uh, gutters on the back. Right, and then a third yes, 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 I agree. Three. Do it in pieces like that. Because trying to get it all done at once just that'd be too much. Oh, true. <laughs> and and then if it's open, if it's open, if the resolution is open enough, that provides us the flexibility to not have to go back each time too. Right. Um, that's, that's a good idea. Can you hear good? <laughs> so I guess is there any other things on the dog park or Ben, you feel good on the dog park? I trust I trust in Darren. <laughs> we'll put it on a coin. <laughs> um, I guess that was it then. There's no action items or anything requiring a motion. Um, any board comments? Start with Karen. Uh, no, um, like I said, I like one the day. I was over at Coconut the other day and it looked really good. Other than that, no. The uh, only comment I had was we'll follow up. Lucy had mentioned um, about maybe checking some shade out at Coconut to see where shading's at. Please. Over there, so we'll run in and do that. Anything? Definitely before the 22nd. <laughs> what, what oh yeah, for yes. the <laughs> Any other comments on, Ben, any comments or? Uh, no, oh, maybe just a question. You know, I know the council had come and kind of given us our marching orders, just high level priorities. And oh, yes. you know, some of that was the parks like we talked about early on. Um, and then it was the ordinances and I think the alcohol language. Um, <laughs> I'm recalling, but I guess my question was, are those just specific things that we'll put on agendas or what's our, what's our means for being sure we're tackling those things? From what I've heard, when they passed that, uh, cause that is in a resolution, I believe from city council that uh, Judy had in there. And that was over the year. I think they're looking for clarity and simplicity in some of the ordinance language possibly there. I had mentioned one thing uh, I went and looked at Wimberley's um, ordinances and stuff in there. It's very different than ours. Ours are very particular and it's there. When you look at theirs, it's like, uh, it refers back to city council. Refer back to like, um, ours can be created by city council. Alcohol laws can be created by city council and all those things. It was very different than the way it was done here. So I really wanna reach out to Megan and Geo and get clarification on what their idea is for that. And for us that have been on the board a little bit, um, and I'm sure Lucy's seen it a lot with city council where they'll come in and um, GI has a particular way where we'll come in and on an ordinance, uh, highlight the sections that maybe need to be amended right. or changed and come back in. And then that would all be approved on our <laughs> end and then sent to council. And there are park rules as far as um, all that you can be there. Right. And regarding also alcohol. Okay. That's so those are already there. If we need to tweak them, then we need to get those um, email to us or you know gotcha and hopefully we'll break it down i'm thinking we're like so we're not all just figuring it out in one thing we think we get our opinions on the alcohol part of it and, right. and other things yeah. maybe we prioritize what we think um should go first so the language can start become becoming set yeah okay <laughs> and like you said i mean that's kind of big picture and cuts across not just our board but you know there's different approaches that you can take with language you don't want the parks board writing it up kind of yeah. very detailed and others writing it up like you said you saw in Wimberley of how you just refer to city council mm -hmm. so probably some guidance we need to get before we start tackling something like that and I'm, there's legal implications that we probably don't even can't comprehend ourselves and you need others to weigh in on so yeah, I think we'll get marching orders and then we'll figure, um, you know, we'll be the one that comes in and amends and, appro and approves to send to council. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Awesome. Then if that is it, our next meeting will be, I guess, is it next second Wednesday of the month in March? I think it's the ninth again, actually. It's the ninth. It usually is. <laughs> it's always the ninth at 5.30, same time, same place. Um, it is much later. So I guess we need a motion to adjourn. Or is that a second? Okay. I mean, yeah, you can. I guess we'll accept a motion to adjourn then. I move to adjourn the meeting. I'll all, second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sounds good to me. <laughs> that was short. Short, <laughs> short, short and sweet. It's dinner time. <laughs> I'll go see if Gio can turn off the recording. Thanks, y'all. See you later.